Hey there, Commanders. This week's community goal is kind of interesting. I'm going to get into it here. It's, uh, it's not the most compelling at an economic level. You're not going to get any fancy modules, no exotics, no special rewards or permits. What you're getting is infrastructure. And both events have already reached the tiers necessary for the infrastructure to be unlocked. So there's no real reason for you to go rushing in here to participate unless you want to try to go for the top 10 reward. But that's not actually what I want to talk about tonight. So this is going to be a really interesting video, more general commentary than community goals. So if all you care about is where you want to have your assets positioned this week, well, community goal-wise, I would probably recommend against it. Because what's happening with the Thargoids is going to be more interesting. In the Galaxy tab of Inara, there is a Thargoid war report that details all of the actions taking place reported by third-party tools used by live commanders in Elite Dangerous. There's a lot of information here you can pour over if you want to get into AX combat. This will give you places you can go. If you really want to get into it and understand what's going on, AXI is your best resource for it. Just uh, look them up, Elite Dangerous AXI, you'll get one of their websites. They've got an entire library of information on the internet that you can use to build ships and do all these other types of things. Now, I can iterate to you what their ship builds are in an upcoming video. I can pick one or two of them and do a detailed overview like I've been doing in Coriolis. Uh, I'll be sure to credit them for that. I just want to mention right now that you can go and look these builds up yourself. So, uh, what's going on right now with Thargoids? I'll go back to the news tab here. Today they hit another three systems, which is significant because this is this ramp up is happening. I think that's five systems now inside the bubble that have been incurred. This is happening as the Colonia initiative is ramping up, and this is a four-week campaign. So what I think is happening is Frontier is giving players an option. If you want to influence the direction of gameplay, you can build this community goal or you can go and fight the Thargoids. This community goal is directly related to what's happening to the Thargoids because the Colonia Bridge will end up being a relief valve for players who do not want to have anything to do with what's about to take place in the bubble. Because I think that the bubble is about to burn. The player base will be handed decisions that will focus that fire to different parts of the bubble or control perhaps how the scope plays out. What I've wanted uh, Frontier to do with the Thargoids is make them an active and meaningful threat to, to the economics of the game. The, the same way that an invading army would destroy the economies of the towns and cities that it moves through during the occupation, the Thargoids ought to be that level of threat. And what I ideally want is for it to be entirely driven by simulations. So there's no one tipping the scales one way or the other. The Thargoids' resources are controlled by what systems they inhabit and what they're able to harvest, and the human's ability to retaliate is controlled the same way. Turn it entirely over to the economic sims and the BGS and let everybody fight it out with the possibility that the Thargoids can win that they could theoretically conquer every system in the bubble if not enough people participate. And the Colonia Bridge then becomes the place that you go to get away from the war if you don't want to be a part of it. In that scenario, I think that the Colonia ends up becoming like the bubble. It ends up growing to replace it as this war progresses. And I don't think it will be a quick thing. Remember, this is a four-week campaign. What's happening with the Thargoids out here in the news tab, is, I think, is going to continue to ramp up as Brewer builds the infrastructure for the bridge. And that at the end of this four-week event, perhaps in the final phase or shortly thereafter, Salvation is going to turn up and whatever this narrative is with his super weapon is going to find completion. Salvation may turn up over the next month and do small deployments of his weapon to kind of elevate the stakes with a potential for us to observe possible consequences each time this weapon is used. Every time Salvation has popped up on the grid and done something, there has been a significant flower-shaped backlash that isn't catastrophic or unmanageable, but is definitely notable. I think as the deployments of Salvation Super Weapon get larger, the retaliation by the Thargoids will get bigger, and I do think that Frontier have a quote-unquote cataclysm in mind. That... It is possible for the Thargoids to decimate the bubble if the players make the wrong decisions here. And we're not going to know what the wrong or right decisions are quite yet. I do think that Salvation is starting to look an awful lot like a bad guy. And Galnet has been careful to note 
that most of the heavy lifting that is being done when fighting the Thargoids is still being done by players conventionally fighting them in single point engagements. This meta level wipe out an entire system's worth in one shot deal, I think is going to start having some big consequences. So my inclination to support Salvation will be directly connected to how interlinked Salvation is with the Witch. I am starting to think that it's going to be better to fight the Thargoids conventionally and focus on developing better weapons for ship-to-ship -ship combat than it will be to try to develop these one-size-fits-all solutions because there's tons of related stories and there's tons. It's a plot element that the easy way out is usually not the best way. Uh, this, I think, will remain true. I think we're going to see the rate at which bubble systems get attacked increase. The pressure will mount. Salvation will probably show up, offer us a solution. Do we take this easy way out or do we slog it out with the Thargoids old school style? And if we take Salvation's solution, I think there is a significant possibility that the Thargoid retaliation becomes a, you know, extinction level event. Because we do not know yet just what the Thargoids are capable of. There's a lot of mystery surrounding them. We don't know how expensive one of these interceptors are to them, what kinds of resources are required to build them. We don't even know how the Thargoids formulate economic decisions. These ships could be as cheap to them as a Sidewinder or as expensive as an Imperial Interceptor. We've got no context for it. But I do think that we're going to gain that context over the next year as part of the lore and that we are eventually going to build up to a point where we are fighting Thargoids in surface wars. I'm going to continue doing uh, ideal feature solutions videos over the next couple of months where I can find time. Um, one of the videos that I'm hoping to get into is combined arms warfare because it's so severely underdeveloped right now. I think they've got a good platform. I think the foundations are there. The weapons need tweaking, the gunplay needs some like some serious attention, and the engineering system has once again created more problems than I think it's actually solving. Um, controversies for another day. For right now, I would keep an eye on the Thargoid War, and I would keep an especial eye on anything that the... Uh, I would keep an especial eye on how the Thargoids react to performance in the Colonia Bridge, if we are given enough context to relate them and to how they react to Salvation's weapon. But uh, that's, <laughs> that's basically all I've got for today, so I will catch you guys later.